important factors to be aware of 
such as air pollution, pet dander, pollen dust, uh, cigarette smoke, and any other known triggers you have, such as maybe an allergy. Um, exercise is extremely important, as well as diet. But exercise can actually cause your asthma. So this is important to have with you when you go to, say, football practice, because when you're running around really fast, your lungs are working harder, and that might trigger an impact. So, but you do need to keep exercising because that will strengthen your lungs and your heart. And then your diet is also really important. Eating a balanced diet, making sure um, that if there's something you're allergic to, say, a lot of people will have problems with dairy because it adds more mucus. So if you notice things, certain foods that do that to you, you should reduce the amount of those foods. Does that make sense? It does. Do you have any questions for me? No, not right now. Oh, great, great. Um, so I'm going to have Sam come talk to you. You guys are going to um, start kind of a care plan so that you have everything you need to take care of your asthma. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sam. Hi, Sam. Do you want to pull up and have a lab coat like those two? But hmm. make it work. So uh, your doctor prescribed what's called the asthma action plan. And that's what you see here. It's a sheet that will fill out and kind of give you an idea of long-term management. So um, we'll start off with, I heard Josie, she mentioned the uh, play sports. Yeah, uh, football and football, but soccer right now. Okay, um, does that, have you ever had any uh, symptoms of asthma and trouble breathing when you're practicing? After I've been running for a while, I get tightness. That's a sugar? Okay, yeah. so exercise has a sugar. Um, is there anything else that sets off these symptoms? Whenever I have a test at school and I sit down and I have a test, I feel sorry to breathe. I know that's funny. Anything else? Um, sometimes my uh, my sister's cat makes me sneeze. Um, so I get mild allergy to cats. Yeah, but it's going to keep the light. I avoid them when I can. That's a good idea. All right, so this green zone here um, is basically your day to day, everyday life. There's no symptoms. You're doing fine. No trouble breathing. No tightness in your chest. And that's not something you have to really worry about, but what we're going to give you is called, something called a peak flow meter. This is sort of a, uh, a way to check how you're breathing. This can actually predict an asthma attack. If you make you feel a little off and you're useless and you get somewhere in the yellow zones, that can indicate that the oncoming attack work is lower than you need. So how you use this is you just tell normal it's not real deep, it's like normally would. You just in your mouth and you blow hard and fast. And it's going to give you a reading, you're going to write that down. You can do it three times and take your average. This is start off. Then you'll get to know what your average is. You just remember it. You do it enough. So, uh, the yellow zone, that's the next one down. That means you're having some symptoms. That's whether it's a trigger or just happens during the night. So, you have some tightness in your chest. You feel a little bit of trouble breathing. And that's, um, like Joseph was saying, really when it's important to you. As far as your medications go, you want to stick to the plan that your doctor gave you. Take your inhaler as prescribed. And right now, the idea is to manage your asthma. So right now, you just have an inhaler, but you may see fit to put you on additional medications. There's some oral medications that you can take. If this doesn't work, if you manage it well, you probably won't need them. Just do the inhaler. And the big thing I want to talk about here is red zone. And this is when you're having a lot of red zone. You cannot get up there. Your inhaler isn't working. It's, your symptoms are just getting worse or not getting any better. The most important thing is to get up. Call 911. Um, your coach, if it happens at Dave, he's trained to handle this. So he'll call. Um, you should always have a cell phone on you. So if, you, if nobody else is around, you can call yourself. And when it's happening, there's some things you can do like Try to keep calm, take some deep breaths, and go in a tripod position, which is lean forward, and try to inhale and exhale deeply. And try to control your breathing. It's a scary thing, and hopefully that's not going to happen. Hopefully they uh, will maintain this and we'll never get on this. That's our reason. So can you just tell me again when you should call for help, when you should seek for help, and what kind of things are going to happen? Um, if, if my Breathing is getting worse and uh, not getting better. I mean, if the inhaler is not uh, working anymore, it doesn't feel like it's getting in for me. And I'll write the peak flow meter. If my peak flow gets down in the red zone, yeah. I should definitely pay line for that. Okay. Do you have any 
have any questions for us? No, that's, that's a good explanation. Okay. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, we have our name on that brochure. Call the office and ask.